Welcome to another After Effects stop motion tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to break down how to do flying shots like I do here in my animations. But before I do, I just want to throw out that I have a new Patreon, and any and all support is greatly appreciated there. I'll be sending out free music, After Effects project files, answering any questions on these tutorials, taking requests for new tutorials, etc. through Patreon. So go check that out. So to achieve this effect, you only need two pictures really, a background like this, and then a picture of the thing you want to make fly. Now I originally had three pictures of the three jets, but to simplify it, I'm just going to use one jet here. But you would just repeat the process for multiple pictures of other jets if that's what you wanted to do. So the first thing you want to do is grab your background plate and drop it into a new composition like this and then grab your jet image or plane image and put it on top like this. And you want to grab your pen tool here or press a G on the keyboard and mask out the jet. So with the layer selected, just draw an outline of the shape of the jet or plane and do it much better than I'm doing here. I'm just doing it quick so that you can see. And once you close that shape, the mask will then only show what you selected. So you can drag this around and you can see that you can animate it moving around, etc. And you can also use Roto Brush if you're familiar with that, but I won't cover it here. So I'm going to delete that layer because I did a much better masking job already, and I'm just going to drag that in right here. So the next thing you want to do is change your composition size to be whatever size you want your final video to be. So if you wanted it to be in 1080p, you would do 1920 by 1080. Uh, I want mine to be in 4K, so I'm going to do 3840 by 2160. It just depends on how big your pictures are and how big your final project is going to be. And the reason I went ahead and did that is because it gives us more real estate because I'm essentially just going to be moving the background like this. And you can see that when I change the composition size, because I took a big picture, I already have room to move it around. Of course, like I said, it depends on how big your picture is and how big you want your final composition to be. But I think it's good to go ahead and change the composition size right away. And now I'm going to get to animating that picture. So as you can see, the picture isn't very big. If I were to animate it going from um, left to right like this, then it would go by pretty quickly and we wouldn't have a very long shot of the jet flying because I would want it to move a lot faster than that. So it would look something like this. As you can see on my timeline, it's only lasting about a second, which isn't very good. So. To fix that, I'm going to go ahead and delete those position keyframes I just did. I'm going to go to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile right here. And bring out the effects controls right there. And what that allows you to do is to do something called Mirror Edges. So select Mirror Edges and then change your output width to something like 400. Now, what that does is it repeats the edges of the image. So you can tell like here's a little plant in my background and if I drag it this way you can see that it's just mirroring that image uh, and there's that plant again there repeating and if I keep on going it repeats again and if I go this way it's repeating as well. And the bigger that number is here output width the more times it's going to repeat uh, in terms of width. Now, if you're making a shot where a jet or something was flying up and you want to move that way, you would just change the output height to something big. I'm going to go ahead and increase my output width even more to something like 600. And I'm going to zoom out so that I can drag this layer as far to the left as I can. So it looks like I can drag it about that far. I'm going to go to the beginning of my composition. Uh, press P to bring up position on the background layer. Start keyframing by selecting that stopwatch right there. I'm going to go to the end of my composition, which by the way, my composition is five seconds. And I'm going to drag the background all the way to the right. And by the way, to make sure that it doesn't move up or down at all, you can hold shift to um, keep it in a straight line. So it looks like I can go about this far. So I'm going to stop it right there. And now I'm going to go through and just preview that to see how fast it's moving because I have a certain idea of how fast I want it to move in my head. Uh, and of course you can just play around with it to your taste. But this isn't fast enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that keyframe out a little bit closer so that it moves a bit faster. And that's starting to look good to me. 
Now, if I've wanted a five second shot, this would not be good enough because my shot would end right here where this keyframe is. So to fix that, I would probably just increase the output width even more and move it even further. But three seconds is more than enough time for the shot for what I need it for, so I'm happy with that. And you should go ahead and turn on motion blur by clicking this little box here underneath the motion blur setting. And that will blur your background and that will give you a much better idea of how it's actually gonna look, assuming that you want to export it with motion blur, which I think is a good idea for this effect. So as you can see, it looks a lot better when you've got motion blur going on. And yeah, so now that we've got our moving background, we can animate the jet a little bit, including uh, the actual fire coming out of the jet. So I'm gonna scale down my layer a little bit because I want it to be a little bit smaller in frame. And I'm gonna position it over here a little bit to the right. And I'm gonna hit P on this layer to start keyframing the position of the jet. And I'm gonna go forward just to where I have this keyframe because there's no point in me animating over here. And I'm gonna move the jet forward about that far. So now not only do we have some motion in the background, but we have some motion of the jet creeping forward as well. So kind of like it's going really fast and we can't keep up with it sort of feeling. You could also move it backwards, of course, if you wanted to have a bit of a different look. And in my original shot, I had all three of them moving and I just sort of moved them in different ways. I had the yellow one moving backwards a little bit, the green one moving forward and the blue one moving up just to give it some life and motion and have their motion contrast each other a little bit. But with this one shot, I'm just gonna have the jet moving forward like that. So you might already be happy with this motion, but I like to add a little bit of a wiggle to it to make it feel a little bit more organic, maybe more intense. And to do that, you want to select both of your position keyframes right here and open the wiggler. If you don't see the wiggler, go to window wiggler. And you want to increase the frequency and magnitude so frequency describes how many times it's going to adjust the position within a second, and the magnitude is by how much. So if I change the frequency to 24 and the magnitude to 100, that means that it's going to randomly change the value of the position 24 times a second by some value that is between 0 and 100. So I'll hit apply just to show you what that looks like, and I think it's probably going to be way too much. Yeah. So as you can see, that looks a little bit ridiculous, not at all what I'm going for. So I'm gonna decrease the frequency a bit, maybe around 11, and decrease the magnitude as well, I'm thinking maybe 30. And I'm just kind of guessing and eyeballing, uh, you can change it to whatever looks good for you. So that's still quite a bit in my opinion. So I'm gonna drop the frequency down to five, magnitude down to 20, we'll see how that looks. So that looks pretty nice. That's about what I was going for right there. And we can of course also turn on motion blur for the jet layer. So it's very subtle, but now there's a little bit of blur as it moves around the screen as well. So now let's add the jet animation, which the way I did it in my example is very simple. It's very cartoonized and you might be looking for something more realistic, but for now I'm just gonna show you how to do that kind of cartoony animation. What you wanna do is grab the ellipse tool up here on the toolbar. If you don't see it and you see one of these, just click and hold and you can change it to the ellipse tool. Make sure you don't have any layer selected and just draw out the flame as you want it to look. So I want it to look something like that. I'm gonna hit V to return to my normal mouse pointer and just position it where I want it like that. Up here in the top, you can change the fill so right now mine is red. You could make it blue if you wanted. I like to make it yellow. That's what I did in my example. So something like a bit of a light yellow like that looks good to me. And now that you have the shape layer, all you have to do is grab this uh, pick whip right here. It's called the parent pick whip and grab it and hold it and drag it onto the jet layer here. And what that does is it causes it to basically follow the motion of the parent layer that you pick whip it to. So as you can see, it's now basically stuck onto our jet layer. So if I wanted to move the jet layer at all, so if I wanted to do something crazy in the middle, it would still follow it. So you can change things to the jet layer, you can adjust it, and the jet uh, fire here will still follow it.
Now to give this a little bit more life, I want to wiggle it as well. I basically want to change the scale of it. So if I hit S and pull up the scale and move it around, basically what I want it to do is kind of increase and decrease randomly. Now, as you can see, if I increase the scale as is, it kind of flies away from the jet. And that's because the anchor point is in the middle. So it's increasing the scale with respect to this point here. So what you wanna do is press Y on your keyboard grab that anchor point and move it over here where the fire makes contact with the jet or plane or whatever. Press V to return to your normal pointer. And now when you increase the scale, you can see that it's increasing with respect to that point there. So basically what I wanted to do is kind of move really fast like this to kind of simulate fire. So set it to the scale sort of in the middle of what it, you want it to look like so if I want it to be maybe this big and this small, I will make it about this big right now. And now we want to wiggle that scale the same way we wiggled the position of the jet. So I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my timeline, press the stopwatch for scale, go forward past the end of our animation, set another keyframe, select both keyframes, and then we're gonna play with the frequency and magnitude again. So I'm thinking that I want it to flicker a lot faster, like a flame, so I'm gonna bump that up all the way to 24 frames a second. But I'm not sure I want it to go 20, maybe 15 is more reasonable. So I'll apply that and see what it looks like. So I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. It now kind of has a bit of a flicker to it, like an animated flame. This would also be really nice if you were just animating something like a cartoon candle or something like that. So that's a great flicker and flame right there. The next thing I want to do is just change the look of it a bit to get closer to what I have here. So I'm going to add a blur to it. So I'm going to go effect, um, blur and sharpen, directional blur. So add a directional blur to it. And from here in the effect controls, you can change the direction of it to point to the right. And we can change the blur length and just increase that to your liking. And you can see what that's doing here. I'm gonna turn off this line so that you can see it. It is adding a directional blur. So if we change the direction of the blur, it changes the direction of the blur. Um, and what we want to do is sort of face to the right. So I'm going to change the direction to be about 90 degrees. And I'm just going to up that directional blur a little bit, maybe to something like that. So now it looks a little bit more like a flame, not just like a perfect edge. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the motion blur for this layer. That will not only let it have some motion blur as it moves around the screen, but there will also be some blur from it scaling up and down as well. So that will help to make it look a little bit more fuzzy, a little bit more like a flame like we want. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks in terms of its fuzziness. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a glow. So I'm gonna go effect, stylize, glow and of course you can make it whatever color you want I'm gonna increase the radius of the glow I'm gonna go ahead and change the fill actually to be a little bit of a lighter color like that so that the center of it looks almost pure white and the edges of it still have a bit of the yellow and with a glow you can color it again if you want so you can change this to A and B colors you could change this to another color and you'd kind of get a different color there on the outside I might make that a little bit of an orange just to kind of give it some variety. Um, and I would make this a darker orange here, maybe something like that. Maybe make this a little bit lighter. Yeah, I like the way that looks there. So now we have a little bit more color in it. And the next thing you wanna do is right click on the flame shape layer, go to blending mode and then press screen and what screen does is it just really helps composite bright effects like this so if you have a flame or a laser blast or a lightsaber or anything like that screen really looks good for compositing it it really helps it blend into the background uh, a lot better so now we have a pretty decent looking flame that is pretty close to how i had it originally so because this guy has a couple of places where a flame might come out of i'm just going to select this layer press Control D, and then move another flame down here. And because we've wiggled it manually, they are wiggling the exact same. 
So it's up to you if you want to have them synchronized like that. So those are both kind of increasing and decreasing at the exact same time in the exact same way. But I like to have a little bit of randomness. So what I'll do is I will delete all these keyframes just by pressing the stopwatch. And I could just wiggle it again and the wiggler would randomly give me some different values. Or what I could do is click alt click the stopwatch which allows me to write a wiggle expression where I can type wiggle parentheses and then I can type in the values I want so I think we had 24 and 15 and the wiggle expression is really powerful because that will generate something new every time you duplicate this letter this layer so if I want to have 100 flames I could just keep on duplicating this layer like this and you'll see what that does once I play it. They are all wiggling a little bit differently from each other. And that's because the expression, every time there's a new instance of that expression, it creates some new values. So I could have done that on the original layer and then when I duplicated it, it would already be how I want it to be. But I want to explain that step to you to show you the difference between manually wiggling it and duplicating it and writing the expression. And it really just depends on what look you're going for because it's whatever style you want. So that is your shot of a jet moving through the air that you can use in stop motions or in any kind of animation. I'm of course using some pictures because this is part of a stop motion animation that I shot in real life. But if these were all flat 2D images you drew, you could use this technique for animating a 2D shot as well. Now to make it look a little bit better and a little more close to what I have in the example, I can add some optical flares and that is a third party plugin. So until this point, we've used everything that comes with After Effects. But if I create a new layer, go to Video Copilot, Optical Flares, which is the name of the third party plugin. I change the blending mode to screen and I change the source type to luminance. Then what I can do is I can pre-compose all of this, all of the work we've done in this tutorial, pre-compose, call it jet flying. And I can go to Optical Flares here and I can select this pre-composition as the source, turn down the brightness because it is immediately way too bright and you can't tell what's going on. Change the threshold so that it's picking up the brightest parts of the image. And because we've created a pretty bright jet there or flame, it's going to pick that up and it's going to add that flare to it. And what I like to do is I always customize the flare to what I think will look good. So I'm just gonna clear everything here, add in maybe a streak right there, add in maybe a little glint, a little spike ball, just whatever you think looks good, a little angled streak, who knows. Um, press okay, and you can see what that does. It adds in that flare right there, and it looks great. It's a great effect. This is what I also add to my lasers. You can play with the threshold, the scale of it, the brightness, etc. to make it to your liking. But this is a really great way to finish it off and make it feel maybe a little less flat but still kind of stylized in a way because I still have that 2D animation asset look that I want but I have something that is doing a little bit of work compositing it onto the scene and making it feel a little bit more alive. So I hope you found that tutorial helpful. Stay tuned for more stop motion animation tutorials. And if you'd like source files or lessons or anything like that, I have a Patreon now and you can support me there. It would be much appreciated. And I'll be sure to send out some music, some After Effects files, etc. there. So any support there is much appreciated. And thanks for watching.